Only recently I reviewed the Dangby Neo, very good full HD projector, but if you want something that's more premium and a lot brighter, and I mean super bright, you probably want to go for this model here from Dangby, which is the Mars that they sent out to me. Now the Mars here has 2100 ISO lumens, so it can be viewed comfortably with okay image quality, even with some ambient light or some sunshine coming in, which I can't say about all other projectors. So it's laser this one, full HD, 60 Hertz, HDR10, autofocus, auto keystone correction. The UI, like the Neo from Dangby, is Linux, so not Android TV. So it's a lot smoother, it's faster, there's less caching, it runs really well, and Netflix is installed pre-installed with Amazon Prime TV and just works out of the box in full HD. So you don't have to mess about trying to install an APK file for Netflix to then find out it's in standard definition, which often happens with a lot of the Android TV projectors I do review. It does have two speakers built into it, which are Dolby Audio, they're 10 watts. I'll give you a sample of that, sample of the fan noise. We'll take a look at the image quality and even a bit of gaming on this because it does have a 20 millisecond latency. So what we get with the Mars is this, the remote. Now it looks like an Android TV remote, but of course, remember it's not running Android TV, but Linux. Dedicated button there for Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, menu keys, volume up and down, manual focus, menu keys, directional pad with OK, mute and power button. It takes two AAA batteries, which are not included. You'll find a cleaning cloth for the lens. There is a PTZ washer if you're going to be using a PTZ bracket, a support card, user manual, our power supply. This is 180 watts and then our power cable. You see up the front here that we do have a little camera. So it does have time of flight and that is used with the obstacle avoidance and intelligent screen fit. It's got auto keystone correction, we have auto focus, and it is a laser ALPD. So it's using their tech in this one, ALPD tech, and it's very bright. So it's 2100 ISO lumens, full HD resolution, HDR10, and the bulb lifetime or the lifetime of this laser unit here is 30,000 hours. The Dang B Mars does have two 10 watt speakers. They are Dolby Audio speakers. I'll give you a sample of them later on in the video, but they are impressive for the size of this projector. So around it, we have this metal grill. There's plastic on the top and it's very good premium design to it. Now there is a fan inside this, of course, like all projectors have because they generate quite a bit of heat. And this model with its very bright 2100 ISO lumens will be interesting to see how that is. So later on in the video, I'll give you a sample of the fan noise and exactly what you can expect out of the Mars. That metal mesh goes around the back here. You can see our DC in, we have LAN port, optical audio out. HDMI's, there's two of them, but one of them has ARC support and two USB 2 ports. This is the infrared for the remote. We have our mounting point right here on the underside. So you can mount this on a tripod or ceiling mount it and later through the settings, just go along and flip the image. Four solid rubber feet that it sits on if you aren't going to be using a mount. And on top of it, which is very sleek, so it's a nice design. This is the power button here with status LED, and there is a, another protective plastic over the top of it, which of course I will remove now. So for my setup, I've got the Mars 220 centimeters away from my white matte painted wall, and this is giving me an estimated just over 100 inches projection. And I've got my studio lights on at the moment. And the first thing that got me was just how bright this really is. You can use this projector in daylight, I can see, with the 2100 ISO lumens. So I'm trying my best here to replicate exactly what this looks like. There's no grading of the image you're looking at now. And if you see banding, that's not happening when you look at it like I am right now. It's just my camera settings. I've tried all sorts of shutter rates. It's incredibly hard to record certain projectors. And this is the best I can get the image. So you see the pre-installed apps, Netflix, as I mentioned at the start there, that's certified. We have a wide vine level one cert with this. Amazon Prime TV, that's full HD too. We've got YouTube, YouTube Kids. There's quite a few pre-installed applications. You do have Miracast and HomeShare Bluetooth speaker mode for it too. And I'm already connected up to the internet. So there are Wi-Fi over the air updates too if you do need those. 
Going up to the top left-hand corner, we have our input, so HDMI home and USB for your external video files. In the settings, set up. So that's what you go through when you first get it anyway. I won't go into that because it's pretty self-explanatory. You've got your language settings, all of that, how you want to have the picture uh, inverted or not, but that's under projection settings here too. So picture modes, standard is the default. We have custom and the brightness at the moment is only 50, wow. It's really bright. I feel like I need to turn it down already a little bit uh, with all the lights off now. So cinema, sport, vivid, and back to standard. I'll keep it on that one because it is the default. Now I can see some banding coming up the screen, the blue background there. Again, you don't see this in person. This is only uh, because of my camera, the way I'm recording here at the moment, trying to capture it the best. Now the UI, because it's Linux and not Android TV, it's very fast really quick. I'm really impressed with it. I was with the Neo. The Neo from Dangby is a similar projector. It's full HD, but it's not as bright as this. The image quality is not as good. The optics not quite as good either. Uh, anyway, we'll go back into just to the last couple of settings I want to show very quickly. So audio, you have self-explanatory here, bass, treble, surround sound mode, and some equalizer settings there, sport, music, movie, digital output mode, dialogue enhancement, if you want that, it kind of boosts up the mids projection. So this is where if you decide that you're gonna be using it inverted, it's gonna be upside down maybe uh, on the ceiling, ceiling mounted, then this is where you wanna go and just go and swap that. So you can flip that around straight away. It only takes a second for that. Network, self-explanatory, about. So I am on the latest uh, version of this. So they do have the updates and I checked for that. Bluetooth focus mode, so you can manually go along and change this, or you can just keep it on the autofocus mode, which works really well. Zoom too, not that we'd really wanna to touch this, but in certain instances, maybe you're just a little far back, a little too close, sorry, and you wanna just zoom it out a bit, you can do that, but it kind of degrades the image quality, so I would not really be changing that at all, put it back to 100%. So you can go right up to 180 inches projection, but ideal kind of image quality is 80, to 120 inches. So right now, as I said at the start there, or just before, I am about 102 or so at the moment, 105 inches. Keystone correction, so auto seems to be working just fine for me. If you see a bit of distortion in this image, again, that's probably my lens. I'm using a, an ultra wide lens here to get this all in. Manual, so you can go along and correct that. We've just got the four points there, uh, fit to screen and advanced. Uh, you have the automatic correction on motion, avoid obstacles, so that is its intelligent screen mode where it will scale it, or will just remove. If there's something in the way, like a pot plant, then it will scale the image, size it right next to it. So handy features to have that are built in. So that is the settings. The menu is really quick. I'll jump now into Netflix. We'll take a look at the performance. Oh, but hang on, sorry, before I do, there is an app store, they've got open browser. So if you need more applications, this is where you will find them. And this tends to load in quite quick. So there is Plex there, you've got TVs, games, uh, a lot of things you can see that you can go through, download different apps and whatnot. And there's categories at the top, you'll see here. So you've got your favorites, kids, sport there, music, movies, news, it goes on, entertainment, all right? So there's quite a bit built into it. If the pre-installed apps aren't enough for you, then you can go and grab some more. So I'll get out of that and we'll go into Netflix now. So that did load in very quick, but I need to select the profile, of course. And here we go, Chris. And that was pretty instant. So going through this menu now, having a look at all of my different save TV series, what I've been watching, whatnot, and everything that's new in here, this looks really good, and I can tell that straight away that is in full HD, that is very sharp, that image is looking great, and really impressed with the performance here of it. It is faster, I think, faster than Android TV. It's certainly a lot more cut down, cut down there, and there is no uh, bloatware with it either. So I won't go into Witcher, I will just go into something I was watching before, and we'll have a look at how quickly it loads in in caches. Can't go wrong with Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is FUBAR's latest TV series. So I'll only play a few seconds of this and you'll see how quickly it does load in. There we go, that's it. 
That is how fast it is. And the image quality straight away, that's in full HD. You notice it. There's no noticeable changeover, so you don't see it being all blurry starting out in standard definition. And then that's unjumped to, oh, wow, suddenly it looks sharp and it doesn't look all pixelated. No, straight away for me, it is in full HD. Incredibly quick there loading up. So we'll get onto the image quality tests, but I want to get out of that and just quickly show you Amazon Prime Video. Okay, so that did load in very quick, and I just saw for a split second a little bit of caching there of the thumbnails, but that is typical, that's normal, and very quick, very quick, these menus to go through them. This is looking good. And again, I'll say it, yes, this is faster than Android TV. I mean, I used to be a, a fan of Android <laughs> TV, but I think now I prefer this Linux setup because it's just so much quicker. We've only got, I believe it's one or two, two gigabytes of RAM, and it's a quad core that it's using, and that's enough. That's all it needs to run this. So I'll quickly go into this. This is the rig, something I've been watching before, TV series. And we'll see how fast it loads in. It should be just as fast as Netflix. I don't see why it would not be. Oh, wow, that was actually faster. Look at that. I have not loaded that before, so I am really surprised at that performance. Excellent. So much quicker than Android TV. I can't believe how fast that loaded. It's there and it's straight away again, just like Netflix in 1080p, which is brilliant because we've got that wide vine cert and both of them are running as they should. YouTube now. So the app is exactly like Amazon Prime Video and Netflix. It's very fast, really fluid. So this doesn't look like it is currently, all right, auto 1080p. Okay, it took a little while to cache in. Uh, the YouTube application, the quality of it here doesn't look quite as good as Netflix and Amazon Prime Video. Now this, I can tell now, yeah, okay, that is in 1080p. Now why I'm watching my own video here is for two reasons, copyright issues, so I don't want to get a strike, but I recorded this myself. I know what the colors should look like. So my t-shirt color is like that. The bike was that green. It's looking very good. I don't see any issues with the colors at all. Now the blacks, do you see any of the speckle? Often with some of the other projectors I've reviewed that are more low end, you sometimes see the speckle, the grain that I call it, and I'm not seeing that with the blacks. So this ADLP projector, Texas Instruments, their tech, looking very good. And with the YouTube app here, you can see the background. I don't see any of it at all. So there's no grain to that at all. Now I'm gonna test out another video. This one is higher quality, very good. It's a guy called Birda King, and my cat absolutely loves these videos, but really good quality to show off what this is capable of, the Dangby Mars. This is his channel, it's Vera's favorite channel. Vera, by the way, is my cat, and you'll see why, uh, because his clips are really quite good with a lot of different birds, and the quality is excellent. Great that there's no ad to start with. So no problems with the caching again, exactly like Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, that it just loads in straight away. Oh wow, yeah, that quality is very good for 1080p. So the colors looking excellent. It's not overly sharpened, it's overly done, no. It is very good. The movements of that bird, no problems with the movement or issues. And I wanted to comment on the optics because I found that their previous model, the more affordable model, the Dangby Neo, had excellent optics, and this is exactly the same. It's uniform, there are no blurry patches, like the edges aren't blurred, there's not one section that's sharp, half the image is blurred, no. It's all uniformed focus, sharpness is great, colors, contrast, and just super bright. Because it does have the 2100 ISO lumens. I'm turning the light on now, and you see it does affect the quality a little bit, of course, but it's still watchable. I could happily sit here and watch a movie, a TV episode with even bright lights on, even daylight because of this brightness. It's possible, but of course, to get the absolute best image quality, you want to do this. Turn that light off. You can see the difference. So light back on, looking a little washed out, but still perfectly watchable. And then there it is off. I'm really impressed with the brightness of this model. Wow, it's good, very good. Even with a powerful studio light on that is aimed at the wall. Then the auto keystone correction and auto focus. So I'm just gonna move it about now, put it in a completely different position and you'll see that it takes a few seconds. It's out of focus, now it's in focus and it's done, that's it. 
So it's uninterrupted. It doesn't put up one of those splash screens to focus. I can go along now with the remote, of course, press the button and then decide to go along and manually focus it. But I do find that it's autofocus seems to be pretty much absolutely spot on. Now onto gaming. So the Mars has a 20 millisecond response time, which is very good for a projector. I just need to go into now the input, select HDMI 2, which is where I have the PlayStation 5 plugged in. And that is looking good. One thing it has not done, however, is the PlayStation 5 normally detects a HDR capable display, and it hasn't here for some reason. So this is looking great, and I can happily game like this. I'm not noticing any problems with the input lag. When I move and look to the left and to the right, I'm not seeing noticeable delays here. So for console gaming, nothing on a professional level, this projector will be perfectly fine for this. Now it has an eye protection mode. So imagine if a small child walks in front of it, you don't want them to look into a super bright 2100 ISO lumen projector. You can see here in my little test that it then turns on the eye protection mode. So that's good. It lowers down that brightness greatly to help reduce any damage to say a small child's eyes or even your own if you accidentally were to walk in front of it and look into the projector. Another area where the Dangby Mars is very impressive is the fan noise. Now most projectors are quite loud, this is not at all. Very quiet, it's under 24 decibels. You can hear a little bit of fan noise if you get up to it really close. I'll give you a sample of it now and you feel a bit of hot air. That's coming out of the right side. But here's that fan sample. It's very hard to hear it. What I also do find impressive is the built-in speakers. So 10 watts, Dolby Audio. Here's a sample of them. And 100% volume, which is very loud and is a bit of bass to them too. They sound great considering they're built into the projector. All up, Dangby have a fantastic full HD HDR10 projector with this unit. So the ALDP tech that's in this with the laser, good for 30,000 hours. That brightness is just amazing. It's the first, first thing you'll notice that when you go up and start it up with the setup screen, it's just, wow, that is really bright. And even with ambient lights on, some sunshine coming in, you can still make it out, you can still see it, which I can't really say the same about the Neo, which is their more affordable model. It's still good, it's brightness, but this is just so much better. The sharpness too, the optics is very uniform. There's no blurriness on the edges at all. It's just perfect focus. The autofocus, auto keystone works really well. The UI is fast, very fast. I'm just starting to get a little bit put off with Android TV now. I'm starting to find it a little bit too bloated. Too many apps, too many things loading in. It's so much lighter, it's so much quicker. It caches those apps up quickly. And Netflix, of course, is in full HD. Amazon Prime Video, full HD. Looks fantastic and just starts in full HD, as I showed you in this video, straight away. There's no change that I've noticed they're going from standard definition looking blurry to then suddenly in full HD looking sharp. No, there is none of that. Contrasts for a projector like this onto where I've been projecting, looking good. Blacks don't have any sparkle, there's no grain. And up to 30,000 hours with this, so you should get a lot of use out of it. What else impresses me is the fan noise. It's under 24 decibels. On the right hand side, you feel a bit of heat. It does get warm there, but it's not an annoying fan noise. You can hear it, sure, but it's one of the more quieter units that I have tested out recently. It is really good. The built-in 10 watt Dolby Audio speakers sound very good for the size of it. When you look at it, you think 10 watts, ah, it's not gonna be that good, but it is, it's not bad. It won't replace the 2.1 setup with speakers or surround or anything like that, of course. And you do have optical out with this model and the two HDMI ports. So it's all basically positive here. I really cannot find anything I don't like about this unit. It's just one thing that's super minor, me nitpicking here, is that sometimes when I go between or out of a screen and I see a black screen being projected, you get a little bit of like a halo round effect that's just showing outside of the normal projection rectangle, if you understand what I mean. You just see a tiny bit. I've not been able to really capture it on camera properly. I tried and tried. You see that? It's just minor thing. That is it. That is really the only thing I've discovered with this projector that it is really good. Highly recommended if you're after a full HD HDR10 
quiet projector, very bright, you don't want Android TV, you want that fast performance, then, well, I think this is it. This model here, the Dangby Neo. So thank you so much for watching my video.